your heads, O your gates, and lift them up, O your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. So it's saying here, uh, personally, if you open up those personal gates, your heart, your mind, all those things, the King of glory is going to come in. We understand that Yeshua is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he will come into us. Verse 10, who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. What is host? Host is armies. It's talking about armies. So turn your Bible, Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Verses 11 through 16. Revelation 19, verses 11 through 16. It says, I saw heaven open, behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. This is Yeshua. Yeshua makes war. The time of him being the Lamb of God is over at this point. He's now the King of kings and Lord of lords. He will make war against those who create iniquity upon the face of the earth. Verse 12, his eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Who is the Word of God? He became flesh. He was the Word of God that became flesh. We're talking about Yeshua here. 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So they followed him. Armies in heaven. That probably will be all of you. You're going to be following him on white horses. I don't think they're really horses, like we know horses on earth, but we'll be riding something. We're part of his army. We're part of his host. And that's what host means, his armies. Verse 15, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and that with it shall be smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he shall tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. In the church of the Revelation, it says those who overcome will also rule with a rod of iron, the nations. We'll rule with him. What a great honor that the King of kings and Lord of lords, we will rule with him. Verse 16, he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's Yeshua. So people talk about so much about what he did upon the earth, and it's good to do that because we need to know about him and know how much he loved us. But there's a day coming he will sit on the throne of God, and at that point he becomes King of kings and Lord of lords. And when that happens, he's coming for judgment. But he's coming with us. We will already gone through our, our ward ceremony with him through a rapture. We'll already gone, be gone through that and receive our rewards. Then we will come with him to help judge the nations. You're all going to be kings. You're all going to be judges. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to judge righteously? Yeah. All right, two of you are. That's good. <laughs> Turn to Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. We're getting with verse 1. Isaiah 63. Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This is that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Edom and Bozrah, more than likely spiritually speaking, Edom represents the world. Bozrah is a city that is actually in Edom. And in my book, The Coming Captivity, I talk about this as probably the actual place of Armageddon, where God will slaughter the nations of the world at that time. Verse 2, Therefore are you red in your apparel and your garments like him that treads in the wine fat. Same thing Revelation 19 just said. Your garments are covered with red. 
And that red, you look it up in, in, in Greek, it tells you red from grapes. He's talking about the same thing. You know, they, they weren't talking about white grapes like we have today. They're talking about red grapes for making wine and things like that. So his garments will be stained with the fat of red grapes. Same thing Revelation 19 says, you see there in Isaiah 63. Verse 3, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, the year of my redeem is come. And I look, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Wherefore my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. What it means, he looked down upon the earth to see if there anybody welcome, welcoming him. Anybody wanted to join with him. Will be with him. But he's looking down upon the earth and says, Who is calling upon my name? Who is willing to join with me? And there'll be none. There'll be none at that point. Matter of fact, the beast revelation, when the sign of the Son of Man appears in the heavens, he will gather the nations to make war against him. That's what Revelation says. When the sign of the Son of Man appears in heaven... The beast will gather the nations and make war against the Messiah. They'll be so deceived they're willing to make war against the Messiah. Matter of fact, in Islam, they teach people that the Christian Messiah will show up in the heavens. And Islam says, don't believe it. That's Satan. So they're teaching their people something different. So that when the Mahdi or the Muslim Messiah shows up in a different way out of the wilderness and stands in the holy temple of God, they're saying that's the Messiah, not the one in the sky. We must gather the armies to make war against the one in the sky. The one in the sky is truly the Messiah. That is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And the nations will be gathered together to fight Yeshua. Great deception will be going on because Islam will convince people that their Mahdi is the Messiah. But we, we know different. We know different. That's why Yeshua says, do not believe anyone who says, I am in the wilderness. Do not believe anyone who says, I stand in the holy place. For when I appear, it will be like lightning is from east to west in the sky. That will be my announcement. And that will be a good announcement. So don't be deceived. These times are still coming yet. And the whole world will be deceived enough to want to make war against the Lamb of God. Hard to believe that they're going to do that. But they will, they will do that. At verse 6 of Isaiah 63, And I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. Yeshua will destroy the wickedness off the earth. His first coming was the Lamb of God. The second coming will be the roaring lion of Judah. It's still the same person. But the age of grace will be over with by that point. When the rapture occurs and Yeshua sits on the throne of God, and he becomes King of Kings and Lord of Lords, at that point, the age of grace is over. That's why today is the age of grace. Once you sh the Father gets off the throne and the Son sets on the throne, that's what the sign of the Son of Man will be. The whole world will see it. They'll see that transformation up there when it says, I and the Father are one. You're going to see Yeshua blend right in with the Father on the throne of God up there. Now he becomes the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's why Revelation says that the wicked will begin to go into caves and say, rocks fall on me and hide me from the one who is coming. The world will begin to panic. Because now there's no grace. You can't say, Lord, forgive me. He said, I'm sorry, Lord. He won't hear now. He's coming for destruction. And the wrath of God will be poured out upon the earth. I've gone over the wrath of God concepts before. All water will return to blood. How, can, how long can you live without good water? The sun will scorch everybody. I know these last few weeks here in Phoenix, we think that plague is on us now. <laughs> but it's not really. A great earthquake that levels all the cities on the earth. Armageddon. All these will take place with the wrath of God, the pouring out of the vials 
upon the earth. It's global. But we as believers will escape those global judgments because the rapture will occur before the wrath of God is poured out on the earth. But we'll be here during the trumpets and seals, and that's not really a real pleasant time either. But we'll be here for that. But not when it goes global. So when Yeshua comes back with his army, particularly in Armageddon, and all the nations of the earth are gathered to make war against the Lamb of God, that's when that's going to happen. When he comes back with his army, the Lord of hosts. That's what that means. The Lord of armies. And you will be part of it. So if I you, I get your swords out and start practicing now. I'm kidding. The Lord will arm you whatever way he wants. But we will be kings and priests. So if we're kings and priests, why aren't we acting like kings and priests? Why aren't we acting like today? Why aren't we taking authority where authority needs to be taken? Why do we let the world dictate to us what we, how we should believe and what we should do? That prayer that Danny read today in the, in, in the state legislator of Kansas, people got it walked out. That was a wonderful prayer and absolutely truth. But the wicked got out and walked out in Kansas. If that same prayer was read in the California legislator, there wouldn't be anybody left in the California legislator. They would all got out and walked out. Maybe a handful would have stayed. Because that was the truth. Wickedness grows and it continues to grow. As it says, when you get close to the second coming, it would be like the days of Lot. Like the days of Noah. Wickedness will prevail. There'll be no justice. There'll be no wisdom. These are all things the Bible talks about. You can see that today. You can see it like crazy today. Even on the political scene, you go, what are these people thinking? Defund the police? You're just asking for more wickedness. That is one of the dumbest things I ever heard any political party talk about. Defund the police? Then you hear people say, well, what will you do without the police? Well, we'll have our own little groups deal with it. And we'll negotiate and we'll talk. And we'll increase people with social training. Oh, yeah. That will work against those evil ones, yeah. Why do you feel that way? Why do you act that way? Did your mother treat you okay when you were a kid? What are you talking about? Boom, boom. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's going to work all right. There's yeah. no wisdom when people and say dumb things like that. No be, wisdom at all. They will be forgiven. It's shameful when you talk about things like that. Even the scripture that Regina read today, you know, about make sure justice is good. And I believe one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is a sense of justice too. If there's no justice, there's no God. And if you don't have pleas to enforce justice, it's a godless society. There is no wisdom. There is no wisdom. It's going wayward. You cannot have wisdom without the Holy Spirit of God. And the world today is suffering because there's less and less people with the Holy Spirit of God in their lives. So what do we do today? We pray. That's what we have to do. We, we pray and we stand. We stand firm on things. You have to have good conviction in your heart to stand for the things of God. If you don't stand for the things of God, you'll stand for anything. You don't want that to happen. Well, you know, you don't quite understand. Tell that to God. God said A, B, C, this is what his commandments are, whatever. It's not for uh, up to us to change them. People say, oh, that's Old Testament stuff. Okay, I'll show you in the New Testament where he says that. <laughs> oh, well, well, you're just, that's your own interpretation. They always got an excuse. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's the same God all the time. Amen? Let's get out our offerings.